Welcome, everyone. We are live with another episode of Level Up Law, where every Tuesday at noon, South Carolina Legal Services levels up your legal knowledge about an area of law that we practice in. I'm Senior Staff Attorney Susan Ingalls here with our producer, Kenneth Elliott. We're in the background, and you are now viewing Attorney Kay Hightower, who is a Senior Consultant for Outreach and Partnership Building at the South Carolina Department on Aging. We're so excited to um, have Kay kick off the month of February, and she will today be discussing all of the many things that our South Carolina Department on Aging uh, does on behalf of our senior citizens. So we're excited uh, to have you here with us today, Kay. But before we get started, we do want everyone in the audience to know that this is certainly not legal advice. Uh, it's just general information for the public when we have Level Up Law episodes. But if you need the help of a lawyer, um, please do call our intake line here at South Carolina Legal Services or apply online, which is a nice uh, feature that you can do now. Um, and that information will be provided in the description box when we upload this presentation to our YouTube channel. Uh, so as a reminder, all of the episodes of Level Up Law are there for you to find on our YouTube channel for South Carolina Legal Services on a separate playlist called, surprise, surprise, Level Up Law. And usually Kenneth has got that thing uh, uploaded in 24 hours or less, so you can see it really quickly. Um, now, as a uh, reminder, Kay can answer general questions if there is time during the presentation. We'll make a couple of stops just in case. So please do put any questions you have in the question box. And as we go through, Kay may be asking some questions and want you to respond in the chat. So we'll uh, have you do that when the time comes. Uh, again, we will be posting that recording of today's episode on our YouTube channel and of course link to the websites for the Department on Aging. One other reminder, be sure to check out our social media. We're on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of the social media outlets as SC Legal Services. If you like uh, the content that we're providing, please do subscribe. If you think that any presentation, including today's, would be helpful to someone you know, please share that broadcast. Uh, and we appreciate you subscribing, but also liking and signing up for those alerts because we do post these every uh, week. And as soon as we post them, you'll get that alert. So think about doing that as well. So without further ado, uh, Kay Hightower, thanks so much for being here. I'll let you take it away. Uh, thank you, Susie. Uh, thank you so much uh, to the uh, audience. I'm so happy to be here and talk about one of my favorite subjects, services for seniors in South Carolina. So I'm just delighted to be here. Okay, first I'm gonna talk about the Older Americans Act. Uh, it was started in the time of President Lyndon Baines Johnson. And President Johnson said, the Older Americans Act clearly affirms our nation's sense of responsibility toward the well-being of all of our older citizens. But even more, the uh, results of this act help us. Whoops, I slipped and went ahead. But the Older Americans Act was passed in 1965 as part of Lyndon Baines Johnson's Great Society Legislative Initiative. It was created for seniors to live at home and in the community with dignity and independence for as long as possible. The South Carolina Department on Aging was established by the Older Americans Act. Did you know that there are about 1 million seniors in South Carolina, that's above people above the age of 60. And that means that seniors represent about one fifth of the state's population. Um, then there's the gray tsunami. South Carolina ranks fourth for relocating senior retirees. 
that's approximately 155,000 people move to South Carolina each year. And of those people, over 50% of those new residents are above the age of 60. I mean, excuse me, of 50. And people above the age of 85 are the fastest growing part of South Carolina's population. Here's how our agency is funded. Uh, we get money from the federal government through the Administration for Community Living. That's part of the Department of Health and Human Services. That money comes to the state of South Carolina in, the, in block grants. And we, the state, because we're the state unit on aging, we get the money. Then we, in turn, take that money to our 10 regional partners who are known as the Area Agencies on Aging. We call them the AAAs. It has nothing to do with cars. And then they, in turn, uh, contract with providers and they provide the service. So that is the funding cycle of our agency. Here's a list of the 10 area agencies on aging. Each county in South Carolina um, fits into one of these uh, regions. Later on at the end of the presentation, there's going to be a slide that has all of the telephone numbers and contact information for all of the area agencies on aging. Here's the criteria for the majority of our services. You have to be above the age of 60 to be eligible. In addition to that, uh, our agency does not means test. This is an area where we are very different from legal services, meaning we do not look at income by law. We look holistically at the senior. So here's some people that you might uh, recognize. I know that, um, that most of our audience is going to be seeing this on tape, so I'm going to ask Susie and Kenneth uh, to play this game with me. Um, the question is, who gets the service? Is it Grandma Walton on the left, for those of you who remember the 1970s television show, The Waltons? Grandma Walton lived in a rural area with her son, John, and his wife, Olivia, and uh, their seven children. Uh, you might remember the show ended with, good night, John boy, good night, Ben, good night, Elizabeth, because uh, each of those child child would say good night. Uh, or who would get the service? Miss Ellie Ewing. She was a character on a show called Dallas that was really big in the 70s and 80s. In fact, it was her son that was JR, who was the famous part of the famous Who Shot JR campaign. Anyway, Miss Ellie is very rich. So in this scenario, pretend Miss Ellie moves to South Carolina and she moves to a rural part of the state, but JR and Bobby and all the rest of the Ewings are back in Dallas. So who gets the service? So Kenneth and Susie, would you play with me? Who do you think would get the service? I choose Miss Ellie, but I think I may have already had a little bit of cheat factor on this. So <laughs> I was tempted to say Grandma Walton, but I think it's Miss Ellie. How about you, Kenneth? I'm thinking it's Walton, though. Let's see. So, uh, so we have one vote for Miss Ellie and one vote for Miss uh, uh, for Grandma Walton. Both of them are above the age of 60, so both are eligible for our service. But because we look holistically, um, Susie is correct that uh, Miss Miss Ellie would be more likely to get our service. As I said in the scenario, Miss Ellie lives by herself. She's an isolated senior. And think about it. Think if you lived in Awanda or uh, the town of Kershaw or in one of the areas in rural South Carolina, and say she was on dialysis and she would have to get back and forth. She would have to get to the grocery store. It'd be really, really hard for her to meet the needs of daily living and for a right isolated senior. But Grandma Walton, even though they don't have the money that Miss Ellie has, she lives with her son, John, and his wife, Olivia. They can cook for her. They have an old car. There are people to drive for her. They're walking distance in the show from Godsey's store. So there is a scenario where even though the Waltons have less money, 
that uh, they would not get their service. We would give our service to Miss Ellie because we look at the whole senior, not just the senior's income. Okay, the first program area that I'm gonna talk about is the supportive services. And these are the programs that help seniors age in place. They're gonna be the information and referral services, the in-home care services, transportation, and our wonderful partnership with legal services, which is provided by South Carolina Legal Services, and which we are so grateful for that partnership. And that's one of the things where there is a means test for that particular program. For all of our services, except for legal services, an assessment is conducted to determine the eligibility for the services. Information and referral program. This is a program that provides the public with current and accurate information on the services in the community, both inside and outside of the aging network. The program then refers the members of the public to the appropriate service. So when you call our office, the first program that you will see is information referral. Get Care SC is our database. For those who don't like to call, they kind of try to like to find their own information, they check out Get Care SC. That is a resource database that allows seniors and caregivers to search for the providers of the service in their area. You just put in your zip code in that service, in your service area, and then you will find out all about the services in that area. So for example, say that you lived in Orangeburg and you were looking for a special transportation provider for seniors. You would just put in your, uh, your zip code and then on Get Care SC would give you a list of all of the senior transportation providers in that area. Get Care SC also has a bed locator to help you find where nursing home beds are. So we're very, very proud of that service. And you just find us at getcaresc.com. As I said before, to get any of our services, you need to be assessed. The assessment determines the eligibility for our services. Most of the assessments are done on the AAA uh, level by trained assessors. And again, we look holistically at the senior, as I was talking about before, not just at income, not just um, whether they're homebound, not just uh, do they have food. We look at every aspect of the senior's life to determine who gets our services. Another one of our services is called home care services. Um, these is personal care, that's assistance with the activities of daily living, and personal care is where you touch the senior. That's help with bathing, um, help with you know walking around the house, that's what personal care is. Then there's homemaker services, that's light housekeeping. A lot of seniors can live independently in their own homes, but they can't bend down you know, to clean under a bed or to do vacuuming. Uh, this program would help them with that. Then there's chore services, which is heavy housekeeping or essential yard work. Uh, essential yard work, a lot of it is mowing. You know, this is South Carolina and grass grows very, very, very quickly. Uh, sometimes if a senior doesn't have the capacity to cut the grass, their lawn is gonna look like the savanna and wheelchairs can't go through. So this is something that the Department on Aging helps with. And in some regions, we provide minor home repair services. And again, this is very, very minor and um, usually under $2,500. And the most common types of minor home repairs that we do provide are ramps. You know, if you have a stroke or something and you need a ramp to get in the house, grab bars, uh, retrofitting, showers uh, so you can get in and roll into a shower. Those are the kind of services that we provide with that program. Again, that is not provided in every region. Transportation, we also provide transportation for seniors. Now this is not the kind of transportation uh, where you just call three minutes before your grandma has to get to her dialysis appointment. It, it, you need to be assessed for this. And the most common types of transportation that we provide 
are to the group dining site. That's where the seniors, you know, hang out and play bingo. Uh, we can provide medical transportation to get the seniors to the doctor and essential shopping transportation. And again, that's essential. So that's mostly groceries and banking, that kind of that kind of thing. Essential is not, uh, you know, shopping for a ball gown to go to the to a ball or a dance. That is not essential shopping. Then I want to talk about our two nutrition programs. We offer group dining program and the home delivered meal program. Group dining provides healthy meals to seniors at no cost. This is usually provided at the senior center. I think this is what people uh, think of uh, when they think of our programs. The senior centers and nutrition sites provide five healthy uh, meals a, a week, I mean, five days a week, and they provide meals for seniors. Um, they are very, very healthy meals, so you will not find a lot of salt and a lot of chicken skin on the meals, but they're very, very healthy. And another great thing about the group dining program is that it promotes socialization. Seniors love to hang out at the senior center and play games and talk to their friends. This program helps with that. Um, the home delivered meal program brings hot meals daily or frozen meals weekly to homebound seniors. This is a really, really important program. And one of the things that I wanna share is that this program in many places is known as Wheels on Wheels. But I wanna make sure everybody knows that Meals on Wheels is a trademark term. We provide home delivered meals. So you can kind of think about it like the difference between petroleum jelly and Vaseline. Meals on Wheels is Vaseline, a trademark term, a brand, and home delivered meals is what we provide, where we bring meals to the senior's home. This is also good uh, for doing safety checks for homebound seniors. Sometimes, you know, it's good to put their eyes on them, make sure that they're doing well. All right, here's a poll question. So Susie and Kenneth, get ready. What's the most popular meal served at our senior centers? Is it meatloaf? Is it chicken? Is it barbecue? Or is it spaghetti? Susie, Kenneth, what do you think? That's a tough one. Um, I'm going to say barbecue. <laughs> Okay, one vote for barbecue. Kenneth, what do you think? I'm not sure. I'm thinking spaghetti, though. Ding, 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 ding. Kevin, Kenneth got this one. It is spaghetti. Seniors love spaghetti. Think about uh, teeth of some of our older seniors. So spaghetti is nice and soft. So it's very, very popular. And it's also an affordable uh, choice. Um, we love barbecue in South Carolina but because of the high salt and barbecue, that's not usually served at senior centers. But everybody loves barbecue. Okay, the Family Caregiver Support Program, that's another great program that we have. It was created in 2000 as the Family, the National Family Caregiver Support Program. Uh, Title uh, 3E of the Older American Act uh, funds this program. And it is an exception to the over 60 rule. In this program, the client is the caregiver, not the senior. And that's different from most of our programs. Um, it also as helps uh, seniors, uh, older relative caregivers. So that would be a senior raising grandchildren or a senior who is taking care of a son or daughter who's an adult but is disabled. The, the, um, there are currently 1 million family caregivers in South Carolina. And again, that's all ages in this program to be the caregivers. So that's one fifth of the state's population. Caregivers provide millions of hours of free services to their chronically ill, disabled, or elderly loved ones annually. And I'm gonna repeat that, that's millions of hours of free services. Here's the next poll question. How many hours of free services 
do family caregivers provide annually? Is it 108 million hours? Is it 957 million hours? Is it 737 hours or 600, excuse me, or 868 million hours? So, uh, Susie? Wow, that's a math question. And, um, but I would want to guess on the high side, um, but I'm going to not go all the way to 868 and go with 737 million. Uh, Kenneth, do you agree? I feel like I'm going all the way up to 957. All right, well, Sue, it's interesting that you guys are going back and forth with being right. Susie got that one right. It's oh. 737 million hours uh, of free caregiving services that people that people do. That's incredible. Is that? Okay, uh, a family caregivers are at risk for a lot of stress, mental, emotional, physical, and financial stress. I don't know if you remember, I, I tell this story because it was really big in South Carolina. If you can go back to 2016 with the presidential primary, if anybody remembers, Jeb Bush was running for president and his mom, Barbara, was all over South Carolina campaigning for her son. She was in great shape. President Bush, the first President Bush at that time, was back in Texas because he was unwell. So she was a caregiver, but yet she was doing everything to take care of her son. Then what happened to the Bushes happens to so many caregivers. You remember, um, Mrs. Bush died. She was focusing all of her attention on taking care of the president, but she didn't take care of her own needs and she died, leaving the president who she loved uh, you know, by himself, and he died shortly thereafter. But this so often happens with caregivers, and that's why this program is so important. This program provides training, support group, counseling, respite, supplemental service, and a back to informational services. Uh, so that's all of the, pro the parts of this program. Um, who is eligible for this? Again, an adult caring for someone who is basically above the age of 60, an adult caring for somebody with Alzheimer's disease or dementia. This is also the Grandparents um, Raising Children program as part of this. So that's a grandparent or relative caregiver who's 55 or older, who's raising a child under 18. And they're also, um, as I was talking about before, people, 55 or older caring for a disabled adult, the older adult caregivers. An assessment is required for this program as well. Unlike the other assessment, we look holistically at the caregiver. Um, respite is a really, really great, great, great um, program that we offer. Respite means a short break from the caregiving duties. Caregiving is really, really hard, particularly if the loved one has Alzheimer's. You know, people with Alzheimer's often repeat, uh, you know, where's my pocketbook? Have you seen my pocketbook? Where have you seen, I can't find my pocketbook three seconds later. Where's my pocketbook? That takes a lot for caregivers to see their once vibrant loved one just repeating things and forgetting things. So this respite is just so important that they get a break so they can meet their own needs. The Family Caregiver Program will give a voucher of about $1,500 annually to pay for a uh, kind of babysitting service so that the caregiver can go out and get a, get a break. Next, next slide. Um, again, counseling and caregiver education that we can do. You think about it, most of our seniors were born either during World War II or you know, some of them were on during the Depression. And think of the TV shows at that time. Uh, Ozzy and Harriet, I Love Lucy, where, where gender roles were different. It's particularly hard for male caregivers. Like I tell a joke that you know, male caregivers know how to take off bras. 
they don't know how to put them on. So they need to be trained and counseled on how to take care of their wives, how to get their hair done. What, you know, what do they like to wear? What color goes with what things? So it's very different, it's very difficult. And we provide uh, counseling to help those kinds of caregivers. Um, then this is another one that's really important. They provide supplemental services, um, you know, which would be Depends or adult diapers, as I, they, in this program also provides home modification against the ramps and the grab bars, uh, legal and financial consultation. They provide a uh, homemaker and also transportation and nutrition supplements such as Boost and Insure. People with Alzheimer's, one of the things that you forget is that you forget how to swallow. So that's why a lot of people with Alzheimer's have to drink Insure and we can help with that. Again, Seniors Raising Children is a, one of our smaller programs, and this is where you just give some a little bit of help to seniors who are raising their grandchildren. It's usually their grandchildren or some other kind of children. We can pay for tutoring, after-school care, summer camps, again, so those uh, grandparents can get a break, and other school-related needs. This is a program that varies by region. Uh, the SHIP program, this is a, one of our great programs. Uh, it's Medicare Insurance Counseling, personalized, free, in-depth counseling with a counselor who's got the same training as, uh, as the people up in Washington from 1-800-MEDICARE. These people are all in South Carolina. They're SHIP counselors in every single region in the state, and if you call them, they will call you back. So I tell people that if you like calling 1-800-MEDICARE uh, and you like listening to Muzak and waiting on hold for hours and hours and hours, call 1-800-MEDICARE, continue to do that. But if your time is more valuable and you wanna pick, speak to somebody in South Carolina who can call you back and won't keep you on hold, call one of our SHIP counselors and they can provide you with the same information. Uh, the Senior uh, Medicare Patrol is SMP, and this is a program that, that we look for fraud. And unfortunately, their pandemic has created rampant fraud in the Medicare uh, system. So this is a very important program. Here's the poll question. Which is our most requested service? Is it home delivered meals, treatment for bed bugs, transportation, or meals at senior center? So, Susie and Kenneth? Kenneth, I'll let you go first this time. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> sure. I'll let Kenneth go um, first this time. Um, let's go with transportation. Yeah, I was thinking transportation uh, as well, but I feel the need to give a different answer. So, I'm going to go with home delivered meals. Well, kind of splitting the baby, the number one unmet need is transportation. Uh, we provide some transportation, but there needs to be more for seniors. The number one most requested service is, quote, Meals on Wheels or Home Delivered Meals. That is the most requested service, but our number one unmet need is transportation. So, we so kind of yeah, you got it. Then I've, you know, I've gone through all of the services, and this is just, you know, a very quick a recitation of all of our services, but the most important question is, hey Kay, these are great services. Well, how do we access these services? You know, what 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 do I do to get them? This is what you do to get our services. Anything. One, you can call the South Carolina Department on Aging, and uh, Legal Services is going to make sure that uh, you guys have access to this presentation, so you can see our numbers or you call the AAA, remember the Area Agency on Aging, in the region where you reside. That is how you get the services. The AAAs are the ones who do the assessments, and that starts the process. And here's a slide that I promise with all of the AAAs and their telephone numbers. So this is gonna go out, so you will know that my grandma uh, lives in, uh, you know, in Bennettsville, so you'll you'll know that county, or my grandma lives in Marion. So if my grandma lived in Marion, you would see the PD region and you would call the number there. 
to get the services. But these people can get the services, or you can always call us at the Department on Aging, and we will uh, get you to the right place. Uh, uh, Susie, do you, uh, Kenneth, do you have any questions? Yeah, a couple of questions here. Um, so on the accessing the services that you just mentioned, um, can a family member do that? Or is it like on the phone? And can a family member do that if the senior isn't able? The answer is yes and yes. It happens all the time. Not just family, you know, not just family of the blood, but family of the heart. Church members, you know, call and that happens all the time. You do not have to be the senior uh, to call, particularly by definition, the caregiver program, the caregiver can call or somebody can call just to get information. Great. So you do not have to be the person to call. Gotcha. Okay. And then another question um, about the family caregivers. Does that have to be um, like a full time caregiver or just a, care, a caregiver that's only needed for a certain amount of time during the day? It has to be a live in. The, the, it's triggered by where you live, not what you do by the day. So, for example, uh, you know, if I lived with my mother, which I do not, uh, and I worked during the day and she was home during the day, I'd be a family caregiver. Okay. So, uh, so, but because because we live together, but what it doesn't include is that if I lived in New York and my mother were in South Carolina, you, you, the caregiver must live with the with the care receiver. Okay, and one more question, and that has to do with the uh, personal services. So are there any personal services that um, Medicare pays for that are like separate from what y'all provide or are some of those similar? Um, there are some that are separate, like the, the most famous is the community long-term care, uh, you know, which is Medicare and Medicaid uh, that is paid, that is paid for. So there can be, it's, it's not, that is not seen as double dipping. Mm -hmm. So you can, you very routinely see people get services from us and services from other places. For example, that you see it a lot with the VA. Right. And then you said that, of course, with the help with transportation, like to doctor's appointments and so forth, obviously you can't call that day and say, hey, I need a ride. What typically is the um, timeline for that as far as getting something like that set up for a senior? It, de it would depend on where you, where you live. How you would, to, to do that, the senior would need to go through the assessment process. So you would call the AAA, uh, of the region where I have the triple A's on the thing. I know um, somebody here lives in Greenville. So say you lived in Greenville uh, County, you would call the Appalachian and number and say, I, you would call for yourself, say, I need transportation services. Or you would say, my mom or my father needs transportation services. And then they would give you an assessment. And when there's not a pandemic, assessments would be done at the home where somebody would come to your home to the seniors home and they would you know have a conversation with them because a lot of times you need to put your eye on the senior to find out what's going on say for example if they're calling about transportation and you ask some food questions and you look that the cupboard is bare like old mother hubbard mm -hmm. and the refrigerator is empty you would see that the senior is maybe too proud to say that they need food, they need the transportation to the food, but they're too proud to say it. Um, another service that we provide, we have a phenomenal uh, partnership with the fire marshal's office. And one reason why we like to go into the home, because they, we will ask, when is the last time that your smoke alarm has had new batteries? When's oh. the last time that your carbon monoxide alarm has been checked? We do not want seniors up on chairs or tables 
trying to uh, put in batteries into these things. This is something that we provide. Oh, that's a great, uh, great point. Well, it looks like that's all of the questions. Um, so, Kay Hightower, I want to thank you. That was an excellent presentation about all the wonderful things um, that the South Carolina Department on Aging is doing for our seniors here in South Carolina. And it's so great to, I know there's lots of ways that you guys um, can try to get the word out and promote what you do. Um, but I appreciate you being with us here on Level Up Law so that we can share that out um, with all of our viewers and listeners. So um, thanks so much. There was so much important information uh, there. So we're so excited to uh, have that uh, that we can share out with our seniors. Um, Senior Services in South Carolina 101 for sure. Um, so I just want to say uh, thank you to you, but also thanks to our viewers. We really appreciate um, that you join us either live or on our YouTube channel. So if you did find this helpful and you know it'll be helpful to others, please go to our YouTube channel tomorrow at South Carolina Legal Services and share this broadcast. Um, we want as many people as possible to get this very important information either seniors or those who are serving seniors. Um, and while you're there, as I said before, like and subscribe for more. If you sign up for those notifications while you're there, you'll get that notification each week when we post another level of, another episode of Level Up Law. So uh, thanks again, Kay and everyone. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Level Up Law on Tuesday at noon. And thanks again for tuning in. That concludes today's webinar. Thanks a lot, Kay Hightower. Thank you, everybody.